Well, hey, folks, Fat Guy Flies RC coming to you from the man cave. All right, what we're going to be doing today, a little project. We'll be doing two parts. I'm going to install a KM afterburner into the FMS Futura version 3, the green edition. And we're going to be changing out the ESC. For This has a 100 amp ESC in it. We're going to change it out for another free wing 100 amp ESC, but this one has thrust reversing. This is the same ESC that comes in the new um, Avanti S version 2. It also comes in a lot of their uh, higher end 80 millimeter uh, free wing uh, planes, the jets that have thrust reversing. So I think this plane could really benefit from thrust reversing, so we're going to install that. Now, to, for the value of time, you're going to want to go ahead and remove your... Re I went ahead and removed the receiver. I'm going to be changing out the receiver, but that'll be a different video or a different subject. Um, I removed the reflex and I removed the receiver that I had in it. So I don't have any wires connected. But the point for you is that you need to remove your throttle cable from the existing receiver in order to do this. Then you're going to undo your EDF cover. Okay, and you have you'll probably if you, so your plane may have some decals, you'll have to cut through the decals. Use a, a razor blade or something because when you put it right back on, they'll line right back up perfectly, and you probably won't even be able to tell. Now, looking at your EDF unit, okay, this one has two screws on either side. Again, like I keep saying, telling y'all, you know, get your little magnetic trays. Okay, two millimeter hex drive. Okay, we'll remove the screws. Your EDF unit may have a Phillips head, it may have flat, I don't, but most of these are now having these two millimeter hex drive or 1.5 millimeter hex drive, which I prefer them over Phillips. I wish Freewing is starting to do it, but I wish they had it on all their planes. I, I like hex head drives, machine screws better, and I like them going into metal housings. Okay, like I say, now my receiver throttle, throttle cable is undone from the receiver, so the throttle cable is laying there loose, okay? You're gonna pick up on your EDF unit, okay? And you're gonna wanna grab the, ED, the main EDF part, little wooden tray, you may have to pick up a little bit on that wooden tray, and slide your existing EDF. I'll show you what, where I'm, what I'm doing here. So you can get a close up. See that wooden tray in there? Okay. See if I can do this one handed. I'm wanting to kind of pull. Don't pull too hard. You don't want to break that wood. But even if you did, it's just glued in. Okay. But that protects the ESC. You're going to slide your ESC out. I'm doing this one-handed. All right, and it should have no obstructions. You see, there's my e there's my entire guts. The entire guts that makes this plane go. All right. Now, one thing I'm going to have to do, and I'll probably do this off camera, when I hook up the new ESC, I'll hook up a battery. Okay and a servo tester, and I'll hold with the blades away from me, and I'll hook up the new one, because I, because look at my new ESC. They're all black wires, okay? These are colored. I'm gonna have to put two in right, and if, I, and if I get lucky, then it'll be right. If not, I'll have to switch two wires out in order to get the right direction, um, of the, just like you would with any other uh, uh, brushless motor anyways, you'd have to do the same thing. Make sure you've got the right direction. I'll just hook up a battery and a servo tester and I'll just make sure that, you know, if I hold the EDF and it shoots towards me, then I know I've got it right. And since I've got this EDF out, look at all that. There's a lot of little bits of debris and grass that's worn in. This would be a great time to try to get a little toothbrush, maybe some alcohol, maybe a Q-tip, and kind of clean that out right now. Okay, so now that you have removed your EDF, okay, and you've removed 
the ESC. Let's make sure that we're going to be able to put, if I can get that glue to kind of let go evenly on that wooden tray, kind of work that a little bit, maybe I can slide that tray out. Because um, pulling it out was one thing, but putting a new ESC back in is going to be a little bit harder. So I'm going to kind of just kind of gently work that wood, toward, kind of pull it away a little bit. And what I'm doing, I'm just kind of working this wood a little bit up, just kind of pulling up a little bit, just not enough to make it snap or anything, just kind of work it a little bit, kind of undo that glue, because I can always replace that. But it'll make it easier if I can get that tray out of there, okay, before I go to put the, ES, the ESC back in. All right, so let's pause for just a moment while I work on that wood. Okay, we're back. Now, to show you a little bit, oh, let me grab the wire. Um, on the back, that wood, I've worked it up enough to where I can easily slide things in and out. Okay, so now we're at the point. We're not worried about the afterburner right now, but instead, what I need to do is I'm gonna hook up the new ESC. Okay, so in order to do that, I'm gonna to need to have a battery and a servo tester standing by, okay? I'm gonna undo the old ESC. Be careful not to cut your finger, but they put these, the safety tape around your connect. Do not just cut the tape off. That's all you're wanting to do. It's just slicing off the tape, okay? And just be careful, just enough to take the tape off, okay? All right, so let me... Camera, camera clue. All right. Be careful when you're taking this tape off and don't let it bother you if you remove some of that insulation. You see a little bit of metal there? Okay. Don't let that bother you. Okay. Got your tape off. Okay. You're going to take your ESC and this is the, where you see that little bit of metal there. That's where the separation. Grab both hands. Slide your banana plug. These are called banana plugs. Move them out. Okay. All right. Now you have your now you can save this and put this in another model. So this is a brand new ESC, nothing wrong with it, but I want reverse thrust. Okay, now in order to hook up this new ESC and know that I've got the right direction, I'm just gonna have to try blind luck right off the bat. And I'm gonna just plug this in here, this one here, and this one here, okay? All right, don't worry about that metal. I've got a fix for that, okay? I'm gonna take my servo, my connector, battery terminal, and I'm gonna plug it in. Here your ESC trying to arm. Won't do anything until it gets signal. I'm gonna take the main throttle or my servo tester, okay? And it says signals on top, so my white wire going to be on top. There goes a six cell count. All right. Now, I want to use my servo tester and I want to dial. Okay. Oh, okay. It's, okay. It's going the wrong way. It's shooting air out. So, just like with any brushless motor, EDF, all you have to do in this case is unplug I'm not going to unplug that one. Just unplug your... Okay. And switch them around. Okay. So I just had to undo two wires. Okay. Now, watch. Coming out correctly. That's the direction of the end. Going in and pushing out. Okay. See my shirt? See? All right, now I know that that is correct. So now I can unplug my battery and unplug the signal. 
Okay, so don't mess with that. Now what we're going to do, is I'm going to get the materials together, and I'm going to show you how to insulate this to where it can be spark-free, and these connections are not going to vibrate loose. So let me get the materials, and we'll be right back. So we're just going to pause. Pause cue right now. All right, I'm going to show you how we're going to properly insulate and secure the new ESC to the EDF. Now, I just got simple soldering shrink wrap, okay? I've already undone this one, this, this ESC lead here, this, the uh, throttle, or what do you want to call it, power cable. And I've slid, I'm going to slide that one up over that knuckle. I'm going to take, because I already know my direction. I've already established that I've got the right ones in the right hole. Everything's plugged in right, okay? I'm going to go ahead, slide this one up over that. Plug this back in. Okay, make sure you can see what I'm doing. Okay. And it works right over that joint, right over the, the, the seam there where they're, they're together. And do the last one. It's important that you would have already established the right direction, otherwise you'd have to cut this off again. All right, now, this is cheaper shrink wrap, so it'll catch fire if I try to use them um, fire. So instead, I'm gonna use a heat gun, all right? So I wanna get away from the model, okay? And it's gonna be kinda of loud. So while I'm doing this, I'll just uh, kinda of pause, okay? So understand, it's gonna be kinda of loud because of the heat gun. But watch the shrink wrap, okay? That's the name, shrink wrap. Takes a little while. Okay, now that's going to be hot. Okay, but I'm now left with a nice tight seam around each of those wires, and I don't have to worry about them coming undone. Now, if there's still a little bit that's not quite there, not quite shrunk enough, you can take a uh, lighter. Just be careful not to catch, be ready to blow it out the flame because you don't want to catch your wire on fire. You just want to kiss it. You just want it to kiss. Now see, if you look, right there are the three knuckles, okay? And there's glue on the inside of the shrink wrap. And it's adhering to all that and kind of just melting in place. So I don't have to worry about this coming undone. I'll let that sit and cool off for just a little bit and we'll be right back. All righty, we're back. This is cooled off enough where I can handle it. Those are nice and secure, and I don't have to worry about my EDF or my ESC coming apart through vibration or what have you. But they're going to be secured in there, so it shouldn't be an issue anyways. But I like to have that little peace of mind knowing that my electrical connection is nice and isolated. So now I'm going to take 
my afterburner kit, okay? For this, you're gonna need two tools. You're gonna need a good pair of some sort of pliers, preferably some, or you're gonna have a fine point that you can grab a hold of something small, and then you're gonna need something that, that's a little, some side cutters, okay? Most everybody has that in their shop anyways, but this is where you're gonna need them. All right, take everything you need to, to install these great K and F burners is in the kit. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do, gonna to wanna to wanna do, is you got your two, actually they give you an extra little zip tie. These are good zip ties. Unplug your two, uh, pro, the, um, I don't know what this is called. This is where the switch, where you can change the modes. You want to unplug this, but remember what side this is plugged into. If it's if if this this is the part that goes to your ESC, I mean it goes to your to your battery uh, balance lead and to the Y that you'll have to provide. But we'll talk about that in a minute. Just remember what side. So if this is here and this is here, I'm going to unplug that there. You just kind of press in and remove it. And then when I go to re-plug this back in, I'm gonna make sure this one is on this side. I'm sure it works the other side, but it's just different functions that I don't know. Now, now you're gonna take your afterburner, center burner. This is a center burner because it goes on the center of the back of the motor. And you're gonna unplug it, un unwire, unwrap this very heavy, heavy grade wire. And go ahead and pull it through your fingers. Try to get it as straightened out is the best that you can because the more that wants to coil the more it's going to get caught on when we go to fish it through okay now this is where you're going to take your zip tie okay you want to see on the back of your edf unit you see these air holes okay we're going to be taking advantage of those air holes and running zip ties through these see these little holes here and these bars that's how we're going to be attaching the afterburn and it's a very secure attachment one important point though is run your wires with your wires you already have see those wires there i'm going to put the, the afterburner here i'm going to run the wires with my esc and my uh power wires okay i'll let all that kind of dangle there put the i want to put this down that i know my plan of attack i'm going to run Remember on your zip tie, turn in towards the flat side. Go ahead, take the end of the zip tie. This is just a little zip tie trick. Start bending the end of the zip tie to where it looks, to where it, you know, it wants to have that natural curly cue because that's going to make your life easier. Fish one end of that curly cue through that hole and push it through like that. Now, Place it on the back of the motor, and you're going to want to fish this through to where that curly cue comes out. This might take some work, okay? But if you've got enough of that curly cue on there, enough of, see, look at that, see? The end just, it just popped right through. It just, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it popped right through. So I'm going to quickly, before I move it, I'm going to pull up on it, see? And that's staying away from the working parts of the motor. You don't have to, oh good, this sits flat. Um, that's nice, this sits flat. Lots of times the, the uh, spinner protrudes down and you're, you're doing this wobbly thing. But this sits flat makes this a whole lot easier. Keeping my wires here, I'm through the metal structure there. I'm gonna go ahead and loosely fish this part, the zip tie, keeping the knuckle up and away from the connection and that way I'm just it's just attached there now I'm going to move the entire assembly away from me okay and the idea is to get this afterburner as centered on there as possible so now I've got one connection I don't have to worry about now I can fish through the other side again the flat side here that's the side you're going to go towards so make your curly coat cue in that direction what I do is I just bend that zip tie and fish it back through my fingers, make it want to naturally bend up. Okay, that just, that is something I've learned. I'm sure I saw someone do it, but it just makes getting a hold of the back of that zip tie a lot easier. 
okay? So now I wanna kinda of get it centered there, find a spot where I'm happy with it, and of course I gotta have metal to attach to. So right there would be good, okay? And usually this second one is a little bit harder to do. But that's okay. Because you're going to be ended up, you're going to be rewarded with a really cool, good working afterburner that's going to really turn a lot of heads. Or you're just going to enjoy it, one or the other. Okay, I'm looking for that little curly cue to kind of skip up, get a hold of it if I can. Sorry if I'm not able to show it on the camera that well. But I'm trying to get a little, little piece to kind of. Poke his little head up so that I can. Don't go digging too deep. Remember, you don't want to hit your coils of your EDF because you get too deep, you can hit one of them, and now you've got some damage there. Ask me how I know. Okay? Whatever you can put in there to get that part of that zip tie. Start bending up. If you got to take it back out, get a little more of a bend on it, you know, then you do that. But you get the point of what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to, I will pause here and we'll fast forward through it till I get that and then we'll show you how to anchor that down. So pause here. Oh, we'll fast forward here is what we'll do. Okay. Okay, we're back. What I went through, I went ahead and gone through the other direction. Then I'm going to fish it through. Just got, you know, whatever way it takes to get that zip tie secured and through there. I came through the other direction, and now this is why you don't want to anchor it down too tight. And I'm going to run it through that hole there. Okay. Now I can go through my zip tie. And you got to remember, if that, if that afterburn is not perfectly centered on there, that's okay. I'm going to pull that tight. All right. Now I'm going to pull the other side tight. Okay. This is where I'm going to take a more of a heftier pair of pliers. Um, don't pull too much, you want to break your zip tie. Put my knuckle on there and kind of pull that up, okay? I'm gonna grab the other side, zip tie. All right, that's on there, okay? Wired, nothing's touching the inner workings of the motor, okay? Zip tie is on there. Yeah, I mean, it, it's gonna vibrate a little bit, but it's okay. Not really impeding any real flow. So I'm gonna lop that off. Lop. That's where them side cutters will come in handy. All right, now look what else I'm gonna do. Okay. All right, so now my zip ties, my center burner is on there. Okay. Now while you're at it, Use that extra zip tie or whatever zip ties you have, okay? And let's go ahead. Don't get it too tight, but go ahead and anchor that, that zip tie on your EDF. I mean, on your ESC, sorry. Okay? It's just a little wire. It's not going to 
not going to do too much, but it's going to keep things from moving around. Okay. Okay. Now, what I'm, I'm left with is a single, single unit that's going to be very easy for me to install. Okay. So let's pause while I reposition the camera and the plane. All right, we're resuming. All right, got the camera positioned. If you can have a go get them wire, like Freewing provides with a lot of their planes, now's a good time to have it. Or you're gonna have to get a old coat hanger or something thin that you can fish through to grab this stuff, okay? But first thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna grab the plane. Have your canopy off, of course. Use whatever tool, because see, I'm dealing with the very top, top of the plane down that channel. Let me see if I can position it where you can see. But I'm going, sorry. Um, going to, so all them wires are hanging there. Okay. And I'm going down that channel. Okay, there's plenty of room. That channel there, we see my, I don't know if you can see my fingers or not. Hands in the way. So, see my fingers down there? That's what I'm dealing with. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'll try to do this. Now let's go ahead and use a go get them wire just to make life easier. Take your plane, turn it upside down. This end, whatever have a curly cue, whatever tool you're using, and go ahead and fish that through. Okay, all right. Now we'll put the phone back on the stand. This is just an old electric electrician's trick how you run wires. And this is why I moved that wood up. See, now I've got something to grab a hold of. Okay. I'm going to take my EDF unit is going to go back in here in this direction. So I'm going to set it up there for right now. Out of the way. Hope it doesn't fall. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and fish the throttle cable and my EDF burner, I'm go ahead and loop them in, this thing into in the, uh, the end of the go get them wire. Okay. Takes a little bit of patience, a little bit of, a little bit of time. But like I said, after all is said and done, you're gonna be rewarded with a great, Great thing. Tuck that down there. I'm going to go to the other side of the model. Where I've got the other end of that wire. And I'm going to just kind of push that through. Pull that on through. The best I can. Like I say, it may take a little bit of effort. Okay. that on going through there get my and now my wood's fighting me that I all right let's see now I've got the other end at the other end of the plane and everything has came through all three of them wires have come through so now I won't have to fight with routing that through okay so pushing this big this big uh, battery connector shouldn't be all that big of a problem. Okay, shouldn't be. But now you can appreciate why I wanted to move that wood up. It should force a lot of that into position. wires to the bottom wires are going to be to the bottom fish your after burning it in towards the tail of the plane and let's get your loosely set your your EDF unit in there let's go to the other end of the plane okay let's make sure that I got a hold of 
and then I've got good clearance on everything else. Okay. All right, there's my, good, see, there's my EC5, there's my throttle cable, there's all my stuffs there. All right, so everything is through. Yeah, I should be okay. All right, so now I feel good about anchored in my EDF. All right, we're gonna go back, EDF, we're gonna get it set. Next spot, okay. All right, I'm sorry, this is <laughs> kind of positioning everything, you can't see it, but I had to make sure. All right, everything's out of the way. I know I got my wires in there, okay. Now I wanna make sure Okay, I'll pull that EDF unit out again. See that wood and all that wire there? I don't know, I guess you don't, do you? Okay. Okay. Let me pull the camera up just a touch so you can see what I'm dealing with. All right, now what I'm gonna do, I'll have to do it without you. I'm gonna get this wood glued back down in there I want to make sure all these wires are nice and neat and running. So let's uh, push this off, put the camera off to the side. Okay, I'm going to pause there and I'll come back and show you the end result. All right, now I have gone in there and I have secured that wood back down, made sure all my wires are nice and out of the way. And, and anchored, and I've reinstalled the EDF units with those four screws you saw me take out. You can just take a look at that for just a second. And if you want to look up, let me show you up the tailpipe, what this looks like from this end. Okay? See, the wires are clearly tucked down in there. They're not going to go anywhere. And that's what I'm faced with now. All right, so now our, our afterburner unit is now installed. Okay, go ahead, reinstall the battery hat or the EDF hatch, which is very simple to do. Remember, you may have to cut some decals or so. That just pops back down on there. Should have two screws, hold it in. Most of the EDFs are the EDFs. All right, all right, now we can do away with the plane stand. Okay, still got our after. Our, uh, Go get them more hooked up. That's okay. That's no big deal. Okay. Uh, by the way, I used to anchor down that uh, anchor that down. I use hot glue, just so you know. All right. Undo my wires back out of my. Um, how to go get them wire. Alrighty. I ran the wires through. Okay. Got my battery in there. I've installed a new Luminarx Gen 2 with stabilizer. It just has wind mitigation. does not have self-level. I plugged in the reverse thrust in the seventh channel. Okay, and I have the, the uh, afterburner plugged into the balance lead, as I showed you when we were taking it out of the bag about how you plug it back together. Well, that's what I did. Everything's anchored down, nice and pretty. You calibrate the, now a lot of, a lot of have a controversy about calibrating your, ES, your, your uh, afterburner with your ESC and, and do it differently, do it at 50% or whatever, because most... And it's true, jets and afterburners do work. They kick in when the throttle gets up to a certain point, 50% or whatever. Well, this is not a scale jet. This is a sports jet, okay? All right, so I've got it calibrated with the ESC to come on at its lowest intensity with the plane sitting still. Yes, I know that doesn't seem scale. 
you scale guys will just have to get over it. Okay, sorry. This is what this is my model. <laughs> okay, and yes, I do know that the ESC these little uh, afterburner LEDs do get hot, but I don't fly my planes for more than three or four minutes at a time. And when they're flying, that exhaust, that cold air is going over that that EF, that uh, LED unit, anyways. Okay, sitting still. Yes, it's hot. Sitting still. Okay, but. With this version four, now it has six different settings. You can hit a button, change how it goes and all that. But I like the default that it comes with. It's gonna be loud for just a second, but you get up over 50%, it goes to that blue, and then you go 100%, it goes to a purple. And that's the way it flies. To me, that just looks cool as can be. Sitting still, it just kind of flickers at the lowest intensity. The LEDs are just barely on. I don't know if I can touch it. Uh, no, I can't really touch it. Uh, it's, it's too far away. But, and that's that. And how I did that in the computer, just to show you reverse thrust, um, got my braking. Okay, the plane's coming towards us. Now I'm going to go normal. Going away from us. All right, so now my I have tricked out the uh, Futura. I now have all the functions, you know. I have my gains on a roller here. So right now I've got the gain set to the absolute lowest, where there's like very little correction at all. But if I notice I'm flying along and she's really getting rocketed by the wind, okay. Well, then I can turn them gains up a little bit on the model, and there's a little more correction. Now, if I got them too high, and high-speed dive is touch start to oscillate, then I know I'm overcorrected, and I can turn that down. Now, you can do the same thing with a forward programming ESC, I know, and that's fine and dandy, but this receiver has just as good range, okay, and has that ability on your eighth channel in your receiver or in your transmitter and this receiver um, only cost me $33 through Motion RC. The same comparable receiver, the same uh, Spectrum receiver that has forward program does will have self level but but also has AS3X wind mitigation is going to run anywhere from 90 89 down up to 134 just depending. Yes it will have safe and self level but I can get all that that I'm going to use in a seven channel Lemon RX Gen 2 from Motion RC for 33 bucks. All right, I mean, and, they, and their range is just as good. To show you where I put the antennas while we're confessing things, I ran one antenna down in the wheel well, so it's kind of straight down and back, and then I got one antenna, well, straight down, and then I got one going actually into the frame of the model and I put, a, I put a clear plastic tube in there and I ran that antenna in that clear plastic tube to protect it. All right, well, there you go. That's how you install an afterburner. Some of the nice features of a Gen 2 Lemon RX a stability receiver. You get a Motion RC. And this is the FMS Futura that I now consider tricked out. I have reverse thrust. I now have a really cool KN Models afterburner. Thank you, KN Models, for sending that out. Shows you how to install it, and now I've got a tricked out, beautiful plane that I cannot wait to fly. Just now, I just got to get the weather to work and do it. All right, y'all have a good. Don't forget to like and subscribe. God bless y'all. Don't forget, Faye family and friends, with really cool jets. Bye. With afterburners from Cam Models.